Okay, good, it's on now. <laughs> it generally helps to hit record when trying to make a YouTube video, or at least so I hear. Hey guys, welcome back to The Stemulus. I'm Steph Evs, and here's what happened this week in STEM. When we think of 3D printing, we think of printing with various types of materials, such as plastics, metals, or maybe even food. However, researchers have announced a new way to 3D print using living ink. The living part comes from bacteria that is contained within the ink. So why print with that stuff that your hand soap is so desperate to kill? Well, the application depends on the type of bacteria used, and as a result, there are multitudes of applications. The ink is actually a hydrogel containing bacteria and the nutrients it needs to survive. Known as FLINK, an abbreviation for functional living ink, it took a while to develop. Researchers had to make sure to hit the Goldilocks zone when determining the stiffness of the hydrogel, not too soft or not too stiff. If the ink got too stiff, the bacteria wouldn't be able to move or even potentially secrete the desired products that they're needed for. According to Manuel Schaffner, one of the researchers that worked on this project, the ink must be viscous as toothpaste and have the consistency of Nivea hand cream. While I probably didn't get that Nivea sponsorship, by achieving this perfect consistency, the team was able to create a material that can be printed into almost any shape. While the research itself is in these super preliminary stages, the ink could have tons of applications. One of the applications the scientists studied including using bacteria that naturally secretes cellulose, which could have medical applications such as treating burns, skin transplants, biosensors, or even creating tissue envelopes to be used to transport organs for transplant. The cellulose is used for these treatments because it's free of debris, holds a lot of water, and is able to soothe wounds. In addition, being a natural material, cellulose is unlikely to be rejected by the human body. The problem is cellulose production requires mobile bacteria since they produce the cellulose strands by propelling themselves forward, which is why that ink stiffness I talked about earlier is so important. The flank also contains tiny glass beads that break apart to allow all of the ink to flow through the printer's nozzle before solidifying again. The 3D printing of Fling is also incredibly important since up until now, scientists were only able to grow the bacterial cellulose required for these treatments on a flat surface of the body. And in case you haven't noticed, there are not a lot of perfectly flat places on the human body. Additional potential applications include detecting toxins in drinking water, cleaning up oil spills, and studying how bacteria form biofilms. So what's next for Fling? Scientists are looking to decrease printing times and scale up production so that they can create more Fling faster. So that brings us to our question of the day. Now we're 3D printing with bacteria and it seems like the possibilities are growing more every day. If you could 3D print with one material only, what would it be? Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, if you'd like to check out this story a little bit more in depth, I will include links to my sources down below along with links to all of my social media and my Patreon page, so feel free to check that out in your free time. If you like this video and you want to see more awesome STEM related content just like it, feel free to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to put out more content weekly and it's actually happening. Yay! <laughs> Don't forget, if you see any really cool STEM related news stories throughout the week, please feel free to send them to me on Twitter at the stimulus using the hashtag twist them and they just might make it into an episode. But with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time.